I want to start with uh, uh, that doesn't happen in a lot of collider screenings. That is a very unique thing. Um, how did you guys like the little coda? <laughs> she should have stabbed him. She should have cut his fucking neck open. <laughs> Sorry, we, we were arguing in the hallway about the And then we made it all like, did it happen? Did he know no. no. Is it going to happen? Does he stop her? Is he going to... No, man, have her just fucking six. <laughs> We did. We want to hijack your media here. For no, no, it's, it's but I, I, funny. I like seeing you guys uh, argue over things. It's actually fantastic. <laughs> Before we get started, I want to give a huge thank you to IMAX for being an amazing partner and for doing this for Thank you, IMAX. A huge thank you and to everyone standing over there for making this happen. Um, obviously, I want to start with uh, just a moment to just reflect on Lance and his contributions to the films. And, uh, you know, just, if you wouldn't mind giving it up for Lance. Yeah. You know, uh, I love his work, and um, uh, I just wanted to, you know, say, uh, I just wanted to take a moment to thank him. He, you know what, what you know what Yeah, I mean. yeah. he was um, uh, a great man, a good friend, good artist. He was one of the original cast members that started the John Wick franchise. I think he was one of the first people we ever cast, actually back on the first John Wick, so. Um, before we go any further, I just want to also say a thank you to the two of you, and I think I speak for everyone in this room. I, I know how hard it is to make movies. To make a movie like this is is really, really effing hard, and I just want to thank you for all the work you guys did to make this. Thank you. Uh, you guys have put on screen some incredible action set pieces, and I am curious, with the four films, what do you think were like the top three in terms of the difficulty from staging, filming, everything that went into it, training? What what were the top three? Arc Day Triumph was pretty hard. <laughs> a lot of cars. <laughs> a dog. It's not men. That's all I got. <laughs> you got the Arc Day Triumph? The Arc Day Triumph was a little tricky. I know. Man. Halle Berry, number three. The dogs. A lot of dogs. The dogs? A lot of crotches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And when, I mean, what about, I mean, just even like the first one, because we didn't know what the heck we were going to, no, didn't we were doing. No, probably that yeah, like the Yeah, like the first, like the uh, home invasion, like that kind of was like. That, that was pretty rough. I mean, it wasn't no, rough, it, rough, but I mean, oh yeah, the night, let's, let's yeah, go to the club. Sick, yeah. yeah. Keanu had like a fever that No, but day. we also, I mean, you might have known it was going to happen, but I certainly didn't know. Yeah, probably. We yeah. got that from you. We didn't want to tell you too much. <laughs> But uh, yeah, probably the nightclub first movie was pretty good. Just because it was, it was so we new. Clueless. Yeah, we were clueless. I mean, and um, then the you know, what about the the party scene fight in Rome on two? No, I forgot about the rock concert. Yeah, the rock concert too. fight that was pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. What about three horses riding horses no, getting off no, of horses? You know what? I'm gonna put that as number two. So I'm the horses. Mind, but the horses in, in Brooklyn. One. The Brooklyn does not like horses. I mean, we're, we're just picking the. <laughs> Somebody had the so idea. So we're taking to do all the time about answering the, Steve's you know, we, question here. No, we forgot that we had trains. Yeah. So we had to do a horse chase under trains. Horses don't like trains. No. So every twenty minutes, the train would come by and the horses would have to take off, and he was. Uh, yeah, but people think it's just me riding. It's like this whole rig with a guy oh, actually no, steering massive. the horse, looking yeah, backwards that, with a fucking that would wires. Take two. That's and the horse two. went crazy. I fell off and yeah. like buried into the back. Yeah, it wasn't very John Wayne. I like how it basically goes to every movie you're just mentioning every set piece and being like, that was impossible. Oh, that was impossible. Yeah, we keep trying to get better, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. So Chad told me that the way you guys come up with uh, the next installment is it, at the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo over whiskey. That's happened a couple of times. Right. So for people that could you sort of pull back the curtain on that? Is it literally you guys at the bar drinking a certain kind of whiskey and just shooting the shit? Well, what happens is the, the the film gets released in Japan usually a few months after the states, and so we we've known what the reaction from from the American audience is, and I guess the studio Lionsgate has a perspective on whether they want to make another one or not, and so it's usually in in Japan where it's either like. Oh, they said we can do another one. And then we look at each other and go, well, what do you want to do? <laughs> I don't know. And then we just make shit up. 
We usually come out of Japan with at least one or two ideas. One, always one good one. One, one or two ideas. Yeah, that's the whiskey. Yeah. Can, can I ask what is the whiskey of choice for each of you? Oh, um, well, Yamazaki or Hibiki? Yamazaki, Hibiki yeah. 21. Yeah, probably so. Like Hibiki 21 is, is quite good and also impossible to get. Not in Japan. <laughs> Yeah. So for this one, the idea was we, you know, because we have to come up with a why, right? What's the why? Why make it? And after chapter one, well, just after John Wick, it was like the why. Well, he's on the run. He's on the run. <laughs> but even before on the run, maybe let's open up the world. And it was like the marker and yeah. all of the friendships. High stuff. table, but, all that came up. And then it. chapter four was why make it? And it was like, okay, he has to die. That would oh, seem like the only yeah. reason to make it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's impossible. He can't survive the high table. I mean, you keep finding. That's the whiskey talking? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Wait till <Anyway>. Monday. <laughs> uh, which of the four films, and in, in, uh, I'm curious for Chad, which of the four films changed the most in the editing room in mm -hmm. ways you didn't expect? Uh, good question. Um, I would say probably number three. Number three, we kind of shifted the second act around a little bit. Um, funny enough, I think uh, obviously there's a lot of work to be done. You, you try to really find the through way to the story. Like I, on number four, as you guys just watched, we try to do a lot of different characters and a lot of different storylines all converging on, on John's storyline. Um, number four is most like the script, I think, of all the movies. Um, I think it's the truest to the script as far as editorial goes. Number, I'm trying to think. Number two, it's end of second act. And number three, we, we had to find a little bit with all the montage stuff. But I think number three was where we shifted story a little bit more in editing to really to really streamline it. I think number three was only, we were just under two hours on that one. So I think that was probably the most streamlined one we had. So this film mm. is 240 plus credits. Let's yeah. say something like that. How long was your director's cut on this one? Oh, 345, easy. No credits, like right on. Now, when <laughs> like you when intermission. You I just have to ask, when you say the director's cut 345, you mean like that's an assembly cut or that's a cut that you actually thought about showing? Uh, no, that's what we show the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think... Mm, I think how not to get the studio on your side. Yeah. <laughs> By Chad Stahelski. Yeah, go to Chad Stahelski school, Film School. Um, but I think um, there's probably like 15 minutes just for enjoyment for me. I'd probably put back in because it just had, it had a lot more Berlin. It was more world building. But I think the movie we released is probably the best, absolutely the best version of everything we've tried. And we tried all kinds of different stuff just, just to proof check it. But I think this is the best version. But there's cool little scenes that just didn't make it. Sure. Um, with Keanu in Berlin, he finds guns. That's why. You know, there's this whole Berlin part and there's a lot more, there's a lot more club fight. There's a lot more Arc de Triumph, a lot more. So can I ask, and obviously we're talking about the theatrical release in IMAX theaters and, yeah. you know, yeah. in movie theaters, but is, but is there a chance like the Blu-ray would have some of these scenes? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think there's some pretty funny scenes. I think that we did that will probably get released at some point. You know, I don't know if it'll be part of another cut, but I don't know. We'll see how we do on, on Monday. So when you're doing, this is for both of you, when you're doing an action scene with uh, people fighting, generally there's no extras because you can control the environment. And in this film, you decided to do a Berlin club scene that involved people, music, lights, rain, Scott Atkins being amazing, and uh, just basically making an impossible scene. So who, who was like, this is what we're going to do? <laughs> yeah um i mean you were you met with the production designer that was like yeah, almost was, it's like almost a post whiskey idea of like i want there to be water in a club scene yeah so my, my dad's a plumber build. so very you know really my dad's a plumber so i grew up with all these water fixtures growing up and he had this waterfall feature in a house that we had worked on when i was like 14 i was like i'm gonna use that in a movie and uh we just put 40 of them in instead of just one 45,000 gallons a minute yeah, we did like 45,000 gallons of water a minute in that club yeah Berlin recycling did not like us yeah <laughs> but but i have but i, I want the extras the we always like this when you do martial arts choreography you're always trying to create the maze what's the set piece you watch jackie chan or any of the great hong kong guys do it and there's always a maze you know they're going through hallways they're going through things there's always an obstacle um 
So you've seen us do it with glass, with mirror rooms. And then, you know, in the club, we do it with people, you know, movable walls, which we call like background extras. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot more coordination. But there's about 20 or 30 of them that are all professional dancers that were always surrounding Keanu and the cast. And then we took that idea of movable walls and we just went, nah, well, we did it with people. Let's do it with cars. And that's how we did it with the Arc de Triumph. I want to ask you, Keanu, if you don't mind, um, filming that Berlin club sequence, because I've never, I, I could be wrong, but I think this is the first time I've seen you doing action with that many extras behind you and around you. What is that actually like as a performer, knowing you have all these people and, and resetting it? It takes, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes or whatever it might be. Um, you kind of start working that out when you start, when the camera sets up. So when you start moving with the uh, steady cam operator and you start filling in all the extras, they get familiar with, with what's going to happen. Um, and then when, if you have to go through people, Chad usually puts in some stunt people that you can shovel, push, shovel away and stuff blockers. like that. Blockers. Yeah. We so always have not, a couple blockers. Not just there. like, hi, I just, um, I'm just dancing and <laughs> John Wick hits you in the face. Um, so it's like, really, they get, you kind of get a, um, know the situation, get acclimatized. Everyone kind of gets through the repetition of it. And, um, Yeah. Yeah, a lot of rehearsals. I mean, most of the, the way we do the martial art choreography, the way our stunt guys train is mostly like dancers anyways, all based on memory and motion and, and group dance or group performance. So when we get together with, you know, I got my 30 stunt guys plus 30 of the dance people, they all kind of work well together. And then we just build the extras out, you know, in sections of 50 so you can train them and then put them in and you realize who's good, who's not, who's got the right look, who doesn't. You kind of partition them off to, to be in different sequences. It does take time, but I think the effect is very cool. So can I ask, how long does a sequence like that, how long did it take you to actually film? Um, in, the, in the club with the upstairs, I think, um, I want to say probably nine days total. I think nine to 10 days for all of, for the upstairs gambling and the, and the club sequence. And how long before you step on set, are you training for that, practicing for that? All the extras are practicing and how much is all being figured out right there on set? Oh, um, Keanu and the stunt guys have rehearsed the same. Oh well, yeah. So when they were filming uh, Hiroyuki and, and Donnie Yen scene, when they're having their showdown in the Osaka continental in the beginning of the film, I was in another room where we were filming in Berlin, just training and learning choreography. Um, Cause my fight scene was up after that. Um, and then for the club stuff. Yeah. So I was training f during the weekends cause there was a lot of, there were some dog hits that aren't in the movie. So I was training dog hits, getting hit by the dog and pulled by the dog. Um, yeah, so it's like a mix. There's like stuff that's known, training for what's known, and then in, and then make it up. Um, I don't know. I guess for my interactions that are in the movie, that's pretty much all um, uh, choreo, uh, set choreo. I definitely want to talk about you have an incredible one -er. Uh Does everyone in this room know what a one -er is? <laughs> or actually, let's, we should explain what a one -er is for people that don't know. But you have the, the one -er scene where you lift the camera up and it's going over everything and you're using the dragon's breath shotgun that sequence is pardon my language i'm gonna i'm, not, I'm gonna hold back cursing it is awesome uh <laughs> it is just awesome um can you sort of talk about filming that that using the one -er, why you wanted to do a one -er? and keanu can you talk a little bit about the dragon's breath shotgun it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome um I, I think we just knew we were, as we were designing the sequence, we wanted to ramp up like in the third act. So it goes from one set piece to another set piece, obviously Arc de Triumph, the driving to the apartment building with the dragon's breath, the top shot. And then of course we wanted to end with the Buster Keaton staircase idea. So we needed something to kind of elevate all the gun food that we had been doing. And we just thought, well, we trade off so much with the video game world and we, we like so many of, of like Asian cinema. So we want to do a top shot, but it was, you know, most, most people don't do the top shots because you just look down at the floor. And there's not a whole lot there. It's a black carpet or something. So we started talking to the production designers and Dan Laus and the cinematographer about how do we make this interesting? How do we make it fun? And then we were doing our rabbit hole dive on all our weaponry and martial art choreography. And we forgot that we were going to use the dragon's breast somewhere else in the movie. But like we saw that, you know, from a top view, it had that beautiful muzzle flash and guys on fires. And we're like, okay, well, we'll just paint the picture without other than practical lighting. We'll do it with stunt guys on fire. <laughs> um, and Dan Laus was really excited about that. We can light the set with people on fire and the dragon's breath and give it that surreal kind of anime look 
So we started developing the four point flying system that we flew the camera on. And then we had to build the set that was at the right height and we needed the staircase. So we saw Keanu come up. So, you know, it's him. And we just kind of telescope up and just kind of live in that world for a little bit. Kind of video gamey, but it also gives it that different perspective. So you actually see the tactical gun fu. <laughs> Gun Fu, the tactical Gun Fu going on. So you could see the bad guys before John Wick did, which makes it kind of fun when you see all the bullets penetrating. So we tried to do a horizontal etch a sketch, as we call it, um, just with color. And Keanu, can you talk a little bit about getting to use the, the shotgun? Yeah, the shotgun was uh, awesome. Uh, because of the way that we uh, use rounds, the technology, they're all plug guns. So nothing actually comes out of the barrel. So I don't get to see all that fire. It's all kind of post fire. I get to hear the sound and get to see the shells eject. Um, and uh, yeah, so I get that little pop, 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 but I don't get to see any, I don't, I saw some people on fire. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so the way it was stitched together, we basically, I had to do all the choreography. Someone would count out loud because the sequence needed to sync with the camera on its fly system. So it was like, one, two, and you're like, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And that would be the end of the take. <laughs> That's, I just, want awesome. you, I just want you to realize how much the stunt training stays with you afterwards. <laughs> So I obviously need to talk about the Paris stuff, specifically that staircase. Uh, for people that don't realize, that is really people going down the stairs. That is not CGI. No, that's all real stunt people. Yeah, it's Vincent uh, Bouillon. Bouillon is a Keanu stunt double for that. It, the stairfall. It's... Yeah. I mean, I want to talk about the Arc de Triumph as well, but I really want to just real quick on the staircase. Where did that idea come from to do the staircase... There, of course. It's right at Chad. Nah, you don't sleep much. Um, no, Can, I mean, before, before you explain it, though, how long did you mm -hmm. actually have to film that sequence and do all those stunts? All, just the stairs? Yeah, just the stairs. I think we had Sacre for like seven days total uh, with the scene up top. So I think we're on the stairs. We went over a week. Yeah, but we also went off. Yeah, so maybe five, six days just on the staircase. Yeah, it's at least five. At least five, yeah. I actually don't know how you film all that in five days. Um, uh, again, we rehearsed very differently than some teams. We were, we over, we rehearse a lot and we have Keanu that we can move much quicker when you're not dividing it up between doubles and wires and safety and you're doing it on the real location. It's as fast as the crew can move. You have a good crew, you have uh, a good rehearsal and you have a cast member that does 98% of it himself, then you can move fairly quick. You just got to have a plan and you got to have great people that can put it together, you know, and we've always been great operators. Good. Yeah, we have Great, great camera operators, like sure. uh, outstanding operators. Uh, Keanu, can you talk a little bit about filming that staircase sequence? What was your reaction when you heard what was coming? <laughs> <laughs> and what? And talk a little bit about filming there because that that sequence is incredible. And uh, I mean, the whole theater was. I think oh, I think cool. everyone enjoyed that one. Yeah, I mean, I love the humor. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I love the humor of the scene. I like that he's just kind of looking at that thing. It's Sisyphus. It's um, Buster Keaton. So I thought there was humor in it, uh, the physically challenging, but we lucked out with some pretty good weather. Yeah. It wasn't too cold. It was nice. Just wet enough. Yeah. yeah some of it was just wet. Well, and then the wet downs, yeah. but, um, but, uh, you know, it's really fun sequence to do. And it was really cool to actually do it solo, have Vincent do that crazy stair fall and then the second stair fall and then the third <laughs> stair fall. And then it was cool to kind of do that part with, I love the way just dramatically, you know, um, John Wick and Kane partner up and go back up. And then there's a whole other feeling to it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was physically intense, um, but it was fun. Uh, Arc de Triumph. Um, that sequence is another one that I, I watched it again tonight. And I'm like, I don't understand how they filmed this, you know? Uh, so can you sort of just talk a little bit about uh, filming that and you standing there where cars are going by you and and the fact that that's really happening. Yeah, don't don't go out of your lane. <laughs> um, we have, a, we have a, a amazing stunt team that we had to figure out how to do it safely and still have the speed going by. Um, what you don't see, we put down all these little cone markers, different colored cone markers, so all the stunt drivers know which lane. They're in the red lane, they're in the blue lane, they're in the green lane. And then we have little spot markers, almost like uh, 
like Twister. <laughs> Keanu's got to stay in his footpath to make sure. Um, that's it. Just have really good people and don't, don't step too far left. Don't step too far right. Yeah. And so they also um, integrated wire work and they, we had yeah. some green foam cars so that people were taking hits off of like move. Well, they had the ramp system. So they, yeah, they don't know what you're talking people, about. People, so we had some guys in wires. So we'd have two people go off a car. One guy would go on a wire in the background, shot him in the head. Yeah, most uh, in the movie. And, uh, <laughs> So there's wire work, there's live cars, there's stunt, there's effects oriented yeah. cars. Most of the time, uh, sorry, um, when a guy is getting hit by a car, stuntman's being hit, it's only about, you know, 10, 15 miles an hour. That's considered a pretty extreme car hit. Mass times, anyways, you know, the mass force. Um, but when we wanted to get more speed out of the car, say upwards of 18 to 20 miles an hour, that's a hard hit for a stunt guy. And the hitting the car is the hard part, but hitting the ground is the much harder part. So we put the guys in these small wire systems. So when we hit, we put a special pad on the windshield so they don't get hung up. Stunt guys pad up, they rehearse, we hit them with the car. They go up and we slow down their rate of descent so we can put them down on the ground a little bit easier so they can survive. A, the probability of surviving is much greater when we do it. So we tried to make it as safe as we could and still get a great impact in it. Uh, Donnie Yen is incredible in this. I mean, really, it's just, he's so good. And uh, yeah. Uh, Talk a little bit about getting to actually do fight scenes with him and the fact that, because he really brought his A-game to the, this is, you know what I mean? Yeah, all of that. <laughs> yeah, he's exceptional. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, what do I say? Uh, the first time that I, we, we, the first sequence we had together with the action was the first scene that they actually have together. Um, and basically, we kind of interact and then we come around, I draw and then he unleashes the cane and all of the choreography we had went out the window. I was just like, I'm too slow. He's doing stuff. And I just turned to <laughs> Jeremy. I was like, that's not going to work. Cause I was supposed to like parry and then disengage and just, and he's like, <laughs> And I loved it because he was true to his character and what came out of that moment, I feel, feels really alive. Cause it's like John Wick, he gets kicked back and then John just gets the fuck out of there. And he's like, bah, bah, bah. And, he's like bah, bah, bah. and he kept going at me and it was just, um, that was actually real. I think the take you took is. No, the take you took is, you re that's real. Yeah. That like the second take, I think. Yeah. It was like, and we decided, fuck that, John Wick's out of there. Yeah, <laughs> just out of there. And he, it was he's not cool. Fight this guy. It, it was gave really a cool. good it status, like, right? Honestly, Keanu just turning and going, fuck this and running away. <laughs> <laughs> and like, check the gate. We're in and out. But he's so beautiful. I mean, he's just, you know, his flavor is so amazing. And, um, yeah, high hand. We're, we're basically out of time, but just real fast. Um, for people that don't know, you actually, there's a little bit more of John Wick in uh, at some point when Ballerina comes out. Yeah, I got to wear the suit one more time, which was nice. It's a film that um, Len Wiseman's directing, Anna de Armas is in, and they were kind enough to kind of collaborate with Chad and I on the timeline. So it takes place between chapter three and chapter four few quick things real fast. Number one, if you enjoyed the movie, please use this thing called social media to maybe say something. Doesn't hurt. Uh, number two, these guys have to get to a, another Q&A tonight. So I would ask that everyone stay seated so they can actually get to the next Q&A. Ladies and gentlemen, Chad and Keanu. Thanks, Steve. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.